Hello, in this video we're going to go over um, the lab for carbon-14 dating, part one, and that is where you are summarizing how carbon-14 is made and how it works in carbon dating, and you will be writing that summary down here. So let's get started on this, and as we go through you can stop the video and record summarizing statements down here. Carbon-14 dating, summary of carbon-14 dating. Carbon-14 is dating Dating is used to date the age of organic material. Let me get my laser pointer. So the big thing is organic. That means that the material had to be living or once living. It cannot be a rock or something like that. It had to be something that was alive at one time. So how does this work? Well, nitrogen-14 turns into carbon-14 by losing a proton from its nucleus. Carbon-14 has a mass of 12. Carbon-14 is a heavier version of carbon-12. So, in the upper atmosphere, energy from the sun combines to make a neutrino. That neutrino collides with the nitrogen. Okay, the nitrogen then loses a proton, which makes it carbon-14, which is just a heavier version of carbon-12. That carbon-14 item combines with oxygen and makes carbon dioxide. That's what they mean by oxidizes. It's combining with oxygen and makes carbon dioxide, but it's carbon-14 dioxide. This then is transported to the lower atmosphere. Okay, so the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 is extremely small. And we know that ratio. So the amount of carbon-14 combined to carbon-12 in the atmosphere is extremely small. But we know that ratio. It, it stays pretty constant. The C14 to C12 ratio is given today as 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12, a very small number. This works out to approximately one atom of C14 to every trillion atoms of C12. So again, the amount of C14 in the atmosphere is very, very small. Moving on, next step. Okay, so photosynthesizing organisms like plants, trees, cyanobacteria, they tend to absorb the carbon-14 or the carbon dioxide along with absorbing regular carbon. So they have a small amount of carbon-14 in them. The carbon-14 becomes a part of the, photosynth the photosynthesizing organism, but the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the plant is the same as the air. Since the plant is absorbing this carbon-14 from the air, of course, it's going to have the same ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 as the air does. Next, so animals eat the photosynthesizing organisms, and carbon-14 becomes a part of the animal. So cows, us, insects eat the organism, and so the carbon-14 then becomes part of them. Right? The ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 in all animals and all plants and all living things on this planet is the same as the ratio that is in the air because the plants and stuff get it from the air and then animals eat it. So the ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 is the same in your body as it is in the air. Right? So we have carbon-14 in us and again it's in the same ratio as that, as that of the air which is a very small number. The ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the animal is the same as the ratio in the plant, the same as that in the air. Finally, that ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14 will stay the same until the animal or plant dies. When the plant or animal dies, it does not take in carbon-14 anymore, so the ratio cannot stay the same. The ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in the body starts to change. Carbon-14 decays and turns back into nitrogen-14. So after it dies, the carbon-14 starts turning back into nitrogen-14. That takes roughly 5,730 years for half of the carbon-14 to change back. So half of the material will change back in this time. By comparing the amount of carbon-14 in a sample to the known value in the air, scientists can determine its age. It takes roughly 5,730 years for half of the carbon-14 to decay. Carbon-14 dating can only date organisms back to about 
thousand years. And the reason for that is the amount of carbon-14 in the living things is very small, so pretty quickly it deteriorates out. And so about after 60,000 years, there's just not enough sample size to have um, anything to date. That concludes this um, presentation. The next thing you'll need to do is the lab. So you'll go in and you will do this lab where you are counting pennies and seeing half-life. You'll understand half-life better. And then we will graph that right here. And then you'll be done with this activity. Thank you and have a nice day.